Oh, hello everyone. I think my house is haunted. That's right, I'm paranoid. It's just, ever since the incident last year, half of my friends were killed during Halloween by a possessed Wii game. This being my fitness coach. Now, thankfully, I did defeat it by punching it into my trash can, which nothing escapes my trash can. Except for we ski, but that just appears when I don't want it to. Oh, come on! I'm still terrified, just in case it possessed anything else. I've had this copy of Bakugan Battle Brothers duct taped to my back for the past few months. But for now, let's play a game that's way less scary. <laughs> Luigi's Mansion 3. Dude! This game is good. Luigi's Mansion 3 just turned three years old. Wait, 2019 was three years ago? That feels like a crime. This game was revealed during a Nintendo Direct on September 13, 2018. It was actually the first thing revealed, but it was only 30 seconds long. Plus, the game looked unfinished. Like, the lighting didn't look natural. I bring this up because the follow-up Direct during E3 2019 where they re-revealed the game was like... Holy guacamole, this looks fabtastulic! The lighting and environments just did a complete 180. Not to mention the new gameplay mechanics looked pretty fun, and Polterpup. I love this stupid dog. If he's less of a hindrance like he was in the second game, he might be worthy of putting up on the fridge. Yeah, so let's talk legacy. Luigi's Mansion was a launch title for the GameCube. This got a remake on the 3DS alongside the sequel, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. The third game released directly on Halloween, October 31st, 2019. So, what should I expect? Well, the first game was a short, genuinely spooky adventure, the 3DS remake was just kind of unnecessary and didn't sell very well, and Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon... All right, it's time for me to play this game for the first time since it released. So, uh, there's Luigi. I'll cross that off the list. Hey, remember when Luigi's Mansion 3 was a working title? I wonder what the finished title is gonna be. The 3 is orange. The 3 is orange! The game starts off by showing Toad. This is Nintendo customer service. I want a refund! So Luigi, Peach, Mario, and some toads drive all the way down to this fancy mansion. Oh shoot, already two for three? Unrelated note, I do not trust the toad to drive. So Luigi makes his way to the mansion with Polterpop! I cannot tell you how much I love this guy. He's on the same level as Poochie for me. We then get to walk around the last resort before it turns all spooky and weird. It's pretty fun to see all these cute interactions with these characters. The ghosts are disguised as humans by wearing masks and clothes, but if you look closely, they don't have any legs, so they just kind of float there. We check in and are are introduced to Helen Gravely. I like this. I mean, we already know the legend in Chad, King Boo, is gonna be the final boss, but as a secondary antagonist, she's pretty good. Poppy. <laughs> oh, poor I love this game. And Luigi immediately falls asleep. Just kidding, Luigi doesn't fall asleep because he's paranoid. I mean, if I saw this nice and pretty mansion turn into a haunted creep fest, I might just piss myself. Oh no, guys! Helen Gravely is evil! Was that supposed to be a plot twist? We're ten minutes in. <laughs> you all remember King Boo's famous catchphrase, right? It's a me. King Boo. How did he get his crown back? This is the exact same design from Dark Moon, the second game. But at the end of that game, they took his crown away from him. So unless Egad happened to have it in his drawer or he just found this at a garage sale, I'm going way too in depth for this game made for children. Anyways, all of Luigi's friends are captured and it's time for one of the coolest sections in the game. That's right, it's the bridge scene from Uncharted Drake's Fortune. I mean, I can't tell the difference. In order to escape, Luigi goes and falls down the laundry chute. Pulitzer Pup saves your life and acts as your tutorial dog, directing you towards the places you need to go. He shows you this car that has the new Poltergust G00 that you need to beat the crap out of those ghosts. We learn these new moves from Poulter Pup before we set out on our quest. So, let's talk about them. 
George, what makes this game different from the others? Well, you can't just run up to a ghost and <laughs> anymore. The flashlight mechanic from Dark Moon Returns, where you stun them, get behind them, and <laughs> but in the third game, instead of going, <laughs> you go wham, bam, whack, smack, crack, boom, slam. You just smack the ghosts on the ground constantly. It's a really good mechanic that shakes up the formula a little. You gotta slam them on the ground when you can, but for ghosts with more health, you might want to suck them up for longer to minimize their health and then slam them on the floor only when necessary. You can suck with your vacuum and push it, which is great for certain puzzles. Pressing both triggers also give you a jump that is great for various boss fights as well as other puzzles. All of these are great additions to Luigi's moveset, which makes him feel more fun to control. Once we learn this, Polter Pup ascends. So we have to follow him. You have 99 health and can gain hearts from certain areas when needed, and each area in the game is littered with money. So much money in this game. Maybe half of my footage is just going through an entire room and gathering all of the money. We have our first fight here and oh my god, I can't hold it in any longer. This game looks beautiful. So maybe I didn't need a title card for this section. I just wanted to say the game looks good. It's probably the most impressive looking game on the console with really fluid animation. There are some collectibles throughout the game. Shut up! There are six gems on each floor, so exploration is really fun. Not to mention money! Yeah, let's go money! Ah, shoot, they captured the old guy too? Well, you know what they say. A murder a day keeps the old guy- wait. Mirrors in this game are key to solving puzzles and getting collectibles, especially after the introduction of the dark light. This will uncover hidden objects, get things out of paintings, and reveal hidden ghosts. Wait! Can I reveal my friend's ghost too? Oh, this looks interesting. Hey, are you taking my copy of Nintendo Land? Hey, get back here! We use the light to save Professor E. Gad, the mad scientist who designs all of our gadgets. We get to see him run around in those tiny legs of his, and it's really funny. We then get to our first boss fight with Steward. You can gust upwards or just wait for him to throw the luggage to kill him. Each boss gives you a new elevator button. Since he's the first one, Steward gives you two of them, the first and fifth floor. My man E. Gad is so crazy, he brings his whole lab with him on vacation. Last time I checked, my house did not fit in my suitcase. In this lab, we've got a gallery, shop, fast travel system, settings, map, EGAD, they've got all the essentials. EGAD also gives you the virtual boo. This is used to bring up the menus and talk to EGAD if you need help. The fact that Nintendo made a reference to their worst selling console and made jokes about it is really funny. We have these cute cutscenes every time we get an elevator button, and let's make our way to the next floor to find EGAD's briefcase for his like 15th experiment. We also learn a new move, the plunger. You shoot plungers with Y and can suck it to slam objects around. Again, great for puzzles. If you take too long, EGAD will yell at you being like, Hey Luigi, get my briefcase already, you slowpoke. Yeah, uh, one second, kinda dealing with something right now. We find the maid who has the briefcase and they just eat it. What, I had to lower my cholesterol. Get that out of there! Inside the briefcase is the best character. Gooigi. That's right, this lovable idiot is Luigi with no personality. Just a green blob that can slip through grates, is basically immortal, and is extremely gassy around water. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick section on the characters, so let's do a fast title card here. Yeah, the characters are really good. The toads in this game are so adorable. They act like idiots, but you know they're trying their best. They have these squeaky shoe sounds that always play when they walk around. It's not enough to be annoying, but it is enough to be really cute. Unlike in other games. Mario! You need to assemble the seven chaos emeralds! Oh my god, please shut up! Better go quickly! <laughs> in this game, he is actually good. Not fridge worthy though, I'm still printing out the Polter Pup photo. Mario isn't really in this game, just like the first game, and he's fine. He's just like, oh hey bro, how you been? It's to me Mario. Peach? I don't know. EGAD is carrying the series, he's so good. Polter Pup, oh the photo's ready, and Gooigi. What else do I need to say? Gooigi. The other ghosts are pretty unique, but I'll get to those when I get to those. Guess what? This game has in-game achievements. Stop! You can earn these by collecting all the gems in a certain area or by doing specific tasks, like playing pool on the second floor. Speaking of second floor, we're on the third floor right now. 
You know, that transition worked better in concept. This floor has an entire mall because... Why not? Since we just got Guiji, this area is focused on using him to retrieve the four different keys to open the key to this one door to get another key, but before that, he has to get a different key to get to the other keys. Pro tip, you know how pressing down on the right stick summons Guiji? Well, if you tap it twice, you can send him away. I did not know this, so Guiji was pulling the screen really far back sometimes, and that was really annoying because I didn't know how to get rid of him. We're then introduced to the enemies with sunglasses, but the gimmick for these guys is just to <laughs> them up and then stun them. The big red guys are also introduced, but they're just big, so it's not that different. This boss fight is extremely easy because you can just infinitely summon Guiji and have no consequences. The police guy is cool too, I guess. Okay, now it's just messing with me. Oh look, a chef! You know what they say, if you throw watermelons at a chef... WHAT?! You kill him. But the mouse took the key, so now we have to lure it with cheese before finding its colony and murdering them all. That's right. E for everyone. Unrelated note, there's not anything to do with the money except for buying gold bones and tracking down gems and boos you can't find. Along with the six gems, there's one boo in each mansion you complete, so once you visit it again, you gotta find them by shining your dark light and slamming their tongues on the floor. That's right. E for everyone. And then the gold bones just save you if you game over, but I never needed them because I am a pro gamer. We make our way to the fourth floor. Hello? Oh. It's for you. He's not picking up. This area is music based, which if you didn't know, I like music. I like music a lot. You didn't see that! There's a decent amount of collectibles, but if you really want, you can just go straight to the boss fight. There are some floors like this that just have a big open area to explore, but you can just go right ahead. Personally, I prefer the bigger floors just because on the smaller ones, the collectibles feel too close together and not as challenging to find. Or you could just watch a YouTube walkthrough. Alright, so for this next collectible, you're gonna want to switch over to Guiji uh, to slip through the gate. Uh, and then you want to grab this little buoy thing and pull it back. Uh, now, now just wait for that to go up. Hold on, let me, let me check my notes here. Oh, okay, so turns out I'm in the wrong area entirely, so you're gonna want to walk over here. This is a very dynamic boss fight. This piano man starts by throwing every chair at you, and then it transitions into a ballet recital. But eventually you kill everyone, so the ghost just says, Nah, screw you, I'm going into the piano. This is actually a really cool part. I always thought it was referencing the piano from Super Mario 64, so naturally, you blow it up. We then save our very first toad, which... I will reiterate, these guys are adorable. One of the coolest floors is the sixth one, the one with the literal castle inside of it. I think I like this due to the medieval references with Luigi almost dying. We learn how to deal with shields, plunge them, grab them, slam them, repeat. We use this to beat the boss, but I had a really hard time figuring out I needed to shine my flashlight right before I got impaled. Hey, look, it's Samson! Who? Charge! Oh, oh shoot! Ah! Oh, my one weakness! What? You were literally about to kill me. How could my plans be foiled? You are within stabbing range. You, you could have just stabbed me. Man, I'm dead. <laughs> I don't like the seventh floor. It's huge! And I know I said earlier that I like the bigger areas, but this place is too tall. And I had to go back here multiple times with no way to quickly go to the top. And there's this pointless area at the beginning that I have to waste my time in. If I just spawned inside this little square and the whole gimmick was it being really tall, I might like it more. Who knew that pineapples could be this dangerous? Me! This is our first time seeing these purple ghosts. Their gimmick is that they try and spook ya and are very evasive. However, just plop a Guiji in their way to distract them. Speaking of Guiji, he doesn't catch the elevator key, so we have to go all the way back down. Anyways, 
murder. You literally use a chainsaw to kill the carnivorous plant, and then you harass the old man. Oh yeah, this floor is my favorite. It's a movie production studio that has posters of previous games on the wall. But that's not why it's my favorite. It's the best because it has Morty! Unlike other ghosts, Morty doesn't want to pick a fight. He just wants to find his megaphone to direct another production. So here's a comprehensive guide on how to get it back. So the megaphone is in the spider web, so you want to get it out. So the first thing you, uh, you want to do is you want to get the water bucket laying around the studio and place it in the well in the horror studio. So when the creepy lady comes up, it's full of water. And then after that, you go to the castle and pour water on this plant to get the fire torch. Uh, teacher, can you repeat that? But the fire blows out. So you got to go to the burning buildings with fire and light the previously lit fire with fire and use the fire to fire up the spider web and burn it to get the megaphone to talk to more. And he casts to use the main character in his newest Godzilla movie So you want to blow their magic fire crystals back at them to reveal some hobo in a suit and you slam him and kill him Boom Morty makes his movie masterpiece and you get the elevator key Got it I didn't understand anything key takeaway the section is awesome and look at that a new character This is Polter Kitty the evil cat owned by the hotel owner Helen gravely You chase it down by finding it with the dark light and then during the fight wait for its eyes to open up to blind it and Brutally murder it then it does this really fun thing where it goes down to the previous floor I really like this feature I love how it makes me go back to the garden floor and I have to climb halfway to the top through these stupid floors again we then meet this unique ghost door that I don't like it's very annoying this guy can hide in certain doors and you would never know which one he's hiding in unless you shine every door with the dark light or run directly into it so in order to destroy it you need to say Sacrifice Guiji. Now, after all of that, I'm gonna kill this cat. Unfortunately, this time it isn't dead, but it does give us back the key to the history museum. Unfortunately, this is not much better as we're being chased by a literal dinosaur. You have to hit it when it's distracted, but the only way you can do that is by sacrificing Guiji. I'm noticing a theme here. It's only in the third phase when it actually chases you around as the previous do. It was just tied up. It's still a dynamic fight, and it's kind of funny that a caveman was in control of the dinosaur the whole time. We rescue the second toad and go all the way down to the basement into the boiler works. For me, this is a very love it or hate it section. On one hand, the setting is really cool. On the other hand, the puzzles relying on this not that great floaty mechanic is a bit disappointing. The boss fight is a bit weird too. Still a pretty enjoyable section, but a little too long. Oh yeah, then we get into the pyramid. There's this huge open sand area to explore, and the style of everything is super nice. And then we get sent underground and have to clear Egyptian puzzles to go through traps. It's real cool. I swear I could suck up the sand for hours. It's so satisfying. The mummies are really sweet, and the boss fight is pretty unique. Probably the best area in the game besides the movie studio and the castle. We then enter the Twisted Suites, which has a whole lot of magic tricks and upside-down ceilings and stupid rabbits. Let's get back here! This floor has some cool elements. Once you reach the ghost, they say, nah, screw you, and then make every door lead you to a different place. However, this is probably one of the easiest boss fights, but it does get interesting once the bombs are hidden inside these spinning hats. But you can just jump up infinitely and be fine. Floor 12 be pirates themed, matey! We're introduced to these green glowing outlets. That didn't do anything. Yeah, come to think of it, what the heck do I do here? <laughs> Oh, my bad. I forgot I had to look through this specific part of the wall. There's no way that's gonna- oh. WHY?! Apparently we have to go back to the boiler works to rescue a toad for a new poltergust upgrade. So, we save him. But the door gets locked, so we have to go all the way backwards through the level again! But no, I'm not angry. I'm just- ah! During this play session, my copy of Luigi's Mansion 3 was struggling. Luigi started teleporting through objects, Toad was teleporting and stopped moving for a bit too long, plungers went through walls, cutscenes were stuttering. However, this was when I discovered the best clip in the game. 
So once we get the toad back, we unlock the ability to big suck. I'm decimating this ship like it's nothing. Unfortunately, this is the only required use for this item. It feels cheap. They make you replay the entire Boilerworks section just to get a feature used in one area. Well, to be fair, it does appear on two other floors. Let's just move on. There's a big beach area and a giant ship that a pirate ghost shark possesses and turns into wood that wants to eat you. Eh, typical Sunday. You have to throw bombs into his mouth and then kill him before he decides to turn the entire ship upside down in order to eat you. Fortunately, I'm a pro gamer and eliminate him with ease. We save our third and final toad, which makes King Boo real mad. So he takes one of the portraits from Helen Shavely. The 13th floor is all about exercise! Yeah! Go, Luigi! Run that treadmill! Go, go, go! Work it! Work it! And we're already at the boss fight? This is a short and sweet floor. Even the boss fight is impossible to lose. You have to hit him with a ball and then run Luigi over to turn off the water. That's it. Even then, I still think he's funny. God dang, you stupid polter kitty! Actually, never mind. We learned that polter pup has a thing for polter kitty. Dang, I didn't expect romance in my Luigi's Mansion 3. Anyways, we kill polter kitty, then she goes down a floor, then we kill her again, then she goes down another floor, and it is ruthless on this last floor. You have to be faster than fast to get this stupid cat. Finally, I kill the stupid thing and go to floor 14. Whoa, disco! floor! Just like the other music-based floor, you can technically walk up and start the boss fight right away, but you wouldn't have seen this cute Mario reference if you did. We gotta kill all the boy band breakdancing ghosts who- <laughs> <laughs> they, they did not just dab on me. We have to find the specific ghost who's a little behind because they're carrying the elevator key, so we just yoink and yoink until we fight the disco lady who we defeat by doing the exact same thing. And yet she's super chill when we catch her. She just break dances away. The moment of truth. The final floor. Helen Gravely is not happy that I made it this far, and sends 14 billion lasers to execute me. We have to rotate a room, navigate through lasers, and climb up a tilting platform in order to get four keys to fight Helen JESUS! Oh my gosh, she uglier than a chicken noodle on a Tuesday evening. This fight is easier than I thought it would be. You still have to multitask switching between Gooigi and Luigi, but besides running faster than the lasers and deactivating the laser panels, this fight is pretty simple. Oh, one second. I gotta look good for my Instagram! After all of this time, we finally rescue Mario, and he immediately abandons us. Mario, where are you going? Now I have to scale the entire building just to- Oh, I see. So we saved Peach too, but it was a trap! King Boo expected us to get to the top, so he captured Egad and all of the other Toads again, as well as Mario and Peach, but not Luigi because my man Polterpup saves him just in time. Mm, I, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm thinking about it. So now we fight King Boo, and let me tell you, this guy is a menace. He shoots fire, throws bombs, shoots lightning, slams on the floor, uses his gross icky tongue, and eventually duplicates himself to stop you. He then gets so angry that he grows the portrait to a size that would destroy the entire mansion in only four minutes. He makes a third clone, but this one is easy to identify, as the real one has a brighter crown. And then you do defeat him with your pro gaming skills and storm away for good. Unfortunately, the painting did a bit too much damage and destroyed the entire mansion. As Luigi plummets to his own demise, he's saved by Polterpup. He's going on the fridge! We save everyone else again and free the ghosts from King Boo's authority. But not the boss ghosts, because they wouldn't also be affected? In the end credit scene, we- <laughs> This is why I hate title cards. I think it would have been really cool if the boss ghosts were seen helping out with the mansion, but no, they're too evil. What about Morty? Morty was the man. He didn't want no trouble. He deserves to be set free. This is still a nice way to close out the game, so this small detail doesn't make it unplayable or anything. And that's the ending for Luigi's Mansion. Uh...
3. Let's go over the extra multiplayer modes. The Scare Scraper is a fun online mode where you battle your way up to the top of the mansion. You can go for 5, 10, or even 20 floors if you're feeling risky. This mode returns from Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon with some new gameplay additions. On each floor, you have a different objective. Collect all the ghosts, get lots of money, kill all the crows, or rescue all the toads. You don't have to worry about the other objectives like getting money in the ghost stages or killing ghosts in the toad stages. Just do that one objective and then you win. I guess you can do extra stuff to increase your score, but I don't think this has any real purpose other than bragging to your friends. I points and you didn't! Screw you! You can have up to eight players when playing in co-op mode, and you can send each other these cute messages if you get stuck in a rug or eaten by a door. There can be some in-game events like all the lights going out or all your poltergeists taken away. There's these cool power-ups you can find that do a variety of different things. The best one is the hyper stroll bulb. Just just look at that! Pro tip, if you slam down a ghost at the right time instead of mashing the button, you can do it five, six, maybe seven times instead of four. Every five floors you can fight a different rare ghost, and at the end of each scare scraper is a fight with Boo Lossus. It's just Diet King Boo, but still pretty good. As a supplementary multiplayer mode, this is really fun. What? I have never played the Scream Park. Even my friend who's obsessed with this game hasn't yet. And after playing it, it sure is a mode. But is it though? No, not really. There's only three modes. This one's good, this one's average, and this one is super slow and boring and bad. The story mode co-op is integrated pretty well. One player plays as Luigi, the other Gooigi. I mean, it's pretty good, and each character is used in various situations, so no one feels left out. So, I would rank the multiplayer an L+. This game isn't a masterpiece, but it is certainly a really good game. Like, name three new games that Nintendo made last year. The... Mario Party Superstars? New Pokemon Snap? Gay Builder Garage? Now, we support all religions here, but the output of quality games on the Switch has been a lot less than previous years. If you want to get into the Switch, this is a great recommendation. Now, there was some multiplayer DLC for that there was downloadable content for Luigi's Mansion 3. What? I... Hi. I'd like to schedule my funeral. All right. Let's see. Time of death, please. About three seconds. So, how would you describe your- What? Of all games, Luigi's Mansion 3 gets DLC. Of all reasons, it's for the multiplayer. Of all things, it's extra costumes. Why? Oh, sorry, my bad. It got two updates! I mean, updates for Scarescraper and Scream Park is cool, but that was never the main focus of the game. You play the game for the story. Both packs contain a few new costumes that add a few new locations to the Scarescraper map and three new Scream Park minigames. Pack 2 is generally thought as the lesser of the bunch, and personally, I don't think you should buy either. That is, if they didn't include Groovy G. Oh, oh my yeah, god, yeah, so baby, so I love I love my I love my 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 love I would put it right here. Now, I know what you're thinking. George, you did not just rank Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics above Luigi's Mansion 3. My response? I like Chinese checkers. Great single player, good replay value, serviceable multiplayer, incredible visuals. This is an easy recommendation to any Luigi fan. I still need to get these dead bodies off the floor. Yeah, I know they've been there for a year, but I feel like they had some nice background ambiance. Oh, come on! Okay, I'm gonna do that now. Get in the closet! Oh, okay, 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 go! Oh. Oh. That'll work. What the heck is that? You fool! You never cared to notice me. For the past few months, I have been lurking in the background, waiting for my opportunity to strike. 
Okay, I'm gonna need a few things explained. Are you really that stupid? Don't you remember my legacy? Huh, your self-fitness. You know, that does sound familiar, but to be honest, I'm an idiot. The game was called Your Self-Fitness. Wait, wait, no, you were the same as that one game. The, the one... What was it? My fitness coach. The My Blank Coach series. My fitness coach. My fitness coach. My fitness. My fitness. My fitness. My fitness. My fitness coach. No, you can't. Unbeknownst to you, I can bring it back. God, I hate it when this happens. For your pitiful attempt at trying to banish us, we'll make sure you never play anything else ever again. No, my Bakugan! Alright, I still have this. What? I, I, how? I, uh, screw you! Come on, pick up! Pick up! What's up? Quinn, I'm in the middle of a situation here. My fitness coach is back and is trying to kill me again. Whoa, 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 hold on, man. Can't you see I'm in Hawaii right now? What? Do you think my ears can see? Hold on, man. I, I I left my garage door open. See ya. Quinn, you... Quinn! You do not hang up in the middle of a crisis! Ugh. I'm sorry. When the heck did you grow an arm? Here we go with a V-step. No! Not the V-step! Here we go with a V-step. Here we go with a V-step. Here we go. Alex? I'm sorry I couldn't help much last time, but this time I'll make it up to you. No! Oh, oh man, are you good? My leg was just shot! Ooh, yeah, sorry, man. Need some duct tape? Thanks, but I can take a... On a date? That sounds rough, man. No, I'm gonna destroy it! Well, no, you are asking to be killed. Well, maybe it's the only way. Well, maybe I'm gonna question why there's a grenade in your pocket. Don't worry. I have experience. Alex, wait! No! Uh... I... I... The game is good. Please leave.